Well, welcome. My name is Michael Thurlow. I'm a pastor here. If you're visiting, welcome to you. Lovely to have visitors and friends joining us every Sunday. It's great. Please stay after our service for morning tea. Enjoy a cuppa and something to eat and, and uh, say hi to one another. It's great, great that you're all here. Thank you, ladies. Do you want to put up uh, that slide for me? Look at that. Busy bees. Let's give them a round of applause. Yes. Yes. There they all are working hard, and there's another slide after that as well. We packed around 20 shoe boxes down the bottom there. You can see what the boxes look like, what goes in them. Ladies busily packing. They even let me touch a few things, so that was good. Um, yeah, so that was fun. We all had a great time and a great morning. So um, thank you, ladies. It was great. Uh, we did 20 shoe boxes. We've, I picked up a couple more the other day, so we can fill five more. And it was a, a great morning and a great project. And... And uh, when they're all s sorted and packed and everything, we'll, we'll um, certainly pray over them and, and display them somewhere up here. Yes, we'll, we'll find, a, find a spot. Lots of thank yous today. Cheryl and Rob Pedler, my goodness, our sausage sizzle champions. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, we're involved in a colour a color run on um, Friday afternoon up at uh, Tawong Primary School. Tawong. Yeah, that's right. I knew someone would correct me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at, at the school that starts with T, uh, Tawong Primary School, and uh, we had a great time there. There was over, I don't know, about 200 odd people, maybe more, kids running through colour, all for child protection week, great stalls. I don't have a slide for that, but that's so nice. 600 in yeah. the school. Yes, so it was a good fun day. We cooked over 200 sausages, didn't we? we? And they just kept coming and we just kept giving them out. I had crap in my hand by the time I'd finished. Onions, no onions. onions. I dreamt about that. <laughs> so we had Cheryl, we had Rob, we had myself, we had. Um, one of the, uh, the deputy principal's daughter, we had a few staff come and give us a hand because uh, once they finished their colour run they were hungry and so they came for a sausage and that was a sight to behold I'm telling you. So next year if you want to come and help me that would be lovely if you want to come and do the colour run. Uh, Church of Christ Care was there, Mercy was there, um, lots of different uh, agencies and organisations because it's good to be a church who's out in the community and they want to know what we're yeah. about and what yeah. we're doing and a lot of good conversations yeah. I had with people as well so who are you and, and they plugged us from the stage so that's always good good to get a free plug but what about Les? Les and his bricks yeah. many of you know we demolished our old barbecue and there was piles of bricks out the back that Les painstakingly played with and sorted and packed and they're gone praise the lord so thank you les thank you others that sorted that out the bricks are gone and to it's lovely to give away free stuff i give away free stuff every week yeah see les we've got a couple of other things we um scored last week so if you're in need of things les knows about them uh, but i i get given stuff all the time uh, to give away there's an electric blanket up the back if anyone wants it we're giving that away as well so that's all the giveaways. So thank you. A great week. Um, a busy week. A very tiring week. Our church has been used for foster care training, food hampers, lots of things happening around the place. If you don't know or don't hear, uh, we're certainly alive and well here in the place. This morning we're looking at David. So we'll get to the sermon. Uh, we're in a series called Live, Life and Lead. I'm having to have a nice big drink of water so you can just chat amongst yourselves. By the end of it, there might be much voice left, but that's okay. I'm going to read Psalm 142. It'll be up on the screen there for you. David will be our focus this morning. David's hiding in a cave in Psalm 142. Beautiful. Thank you. Let's read that along. I cry out to the Lord. I plead for the Lord's mercy. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all my troubles. When I am overwhelmed, you alone know the way I should turn. Wherever I go, my enemies have set traps for me. I look for someone to come and help me, but no one gives me a passing thought. Ever been that person? No one will help me. No one cares a bit what happens to me. Then I pray to you, O oh Lord. I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. Hear my cry, for I am very low. Rescue me from my persecutors, for they too are strong for me. 
Bring me out of prison so I can thank you. The godly will crowd around me, for you are good to me. Let's pray. Father God, this morning as we again just open your word, speak truth and life into our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that we can be your hands and feet. Lord, come and rescue us. Come and sustain us. Heal us. Speak to us. May your spirit reign in our lives. Lord Jesus, just take these few moments now as we just be still before you. May our ears and hearts receive your word. Take my words, Lord, and may they be your words. Not just information, but revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. You thought God had closed the curtain. You thought God had shut the door. But friends, he was just setting up for the next scene. Have you ever felt like you don't fit in? Maybe too smart. Maybe not smart enough. Not cool enough. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt a bit too Christian? Or not Christian enough? Underdressed, overdressed, too noisy, too quiet, too bold, too bashful. Have you ever felt like you didn't fit in? So David escapes friends and hides in a cave. Everyone has a way that they escape. When they just need a moment, it's all too much. The way you escape could lead to greater captivity. It's so important where you go when you run. Because sometimes what you're Sometimes what you are running to will end up running you. How do you escape? Where do you run to when you need a moment in life? 1 Samuel 22 verse 1. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. I saw this during the week. I quite liked it. It says, indecision is still a decision. Maybe you're confused. Maybe you're lost. Maybe you're trapped. Maybe you're stuck. Make a choice. Take a step. God will meet you there. So David escapes to something he was trapped in. So now we know what David has to complain about. In Psalm 142. He's supposed to be a king. But he's stuck in a cave. He is safe, but he's stuck. And he knows there's more to me than this. And he's shocked. And he's surprised. Not by the enemies that surround him. He's surprised by the friends that didn't. David was not expecting it to be easy to be a king. He was not expecting to ascend the throne without any battles. He wasn't expecting it to be an easy ride. Just cruise on into the palace. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am here. David, Jesse's son. Remember me, the shepherd boy? Would you like to see my sling? But he was expecting that the people God called him to serve would have his back. And he looks around from Psalm 142, from the cave of Adullam and says, I'm not surprised by who is surrounding me to kill me. I'm surprised that nobody is surrounding me who cares about me. Where are the people who care about me? Have you ever looked around and been surprised and thought, where have all the people gone? Where are the people I've helped? Where are the people I've cared for? Where are the people I've prayed? Where are the people I've been a friend to? Where, where's everyone gone? I thought it must be pretty lonely for David in that cave. But I just need to keep on reading. 
David is in a place of despair. He's in a dark place and it's just not the cave. He cannot find his support, those who will stand with him. But if we just read that verse 1 Samuel 22, 1 again, we'll be encouraged and reminded when his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him then. People showed up. But there's a difference between being surrounded and feeling alone and being supported. He has, he has escaped King Saul. He has survived and he's gone to a cave. Friends, God will... Next slide. There we go. God will often use what you learn in your storm to help others through theirs. If you're taking notes, write that one down. Stick it on the back of the toilet and on the fridge. Are you alive? Any people alive today? Yes. Oh, oh, thank oh, you. It's gone. It to go God will often use what you learn in your storm to help someone through theirs. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen that this week. Everybody in that cave needed something from David. His family rocks up and they didn't even support him as king. Do you remember in Samuel? Do you have any more sons? Samuel came looking all those years ago. Surely there must be one more. I've come to anoint the king. But none of these men are suitable. Surely you have another son. Oh yes, David. Yes. Oh, okay. Really, David? Really? Yes. Yeah. All those years before. Do any of us get contacted by someone out of the blue? I was just thinking about you or how are you doing? <coughs> might be a phone call, it might be a text, it might be an email. Oh, I was just wondering how you're going or what you're doing. Sure you were. Let's cut to the chase. What do you really want? Or what do you want my help for? Or am I, re am I going to tell you what you are fishing for? Does anyone ever get contacted like that or is it just me? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking about you. Yes, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the real reason you're ringing me? What's the real reason you've texted me? What's, what have you heard that you want me to tell you that I'm not going to tell you? <laughs> Oh, I was just thinking about you, liar. <laughs> I'm, I must be the only one who have people like that in my life. No one else? No? Good. <laughs> Glass of water for the lady at the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you're visiting, we have fun like this every week. <laughs> So David is surrounded, but he doesn't feel supported. We're on the track. We're on the road. We're getting there. Psalm 142, verse 4. No one will help me. No one cares a bit what happens to me. Who really cares? If I could provide for them, would they care? Sometimes I wonder, if I couldn't do what I do, would, would I be okay? What is our worth? What is my worth? Is it in who I am or what I can do? I know I'm not David, but I understand his predicament. The cave may look very attractive. And some of you love to run there. Who's caring for us as people as we negotiate this life? Everyone around us always needs something. Mums, grandmas, significant others. Let's look who God sent to David in the cave. Verse 2 of 1 Samuel 22. All those who were in distress, are you sure God? In debt, 
or discontented are gathered around him. Are you serious? These are the people you've sent me, God? Here I am in the cave? Really? What was God up to? Was he trying to just mess with David? Nobody's surrounding me and God says, I'm going to give you 400 men who have needs and issues. Amen. Fantastic. You thought you were alone, but you were not. And in 1 Samuel 22, verse 2, And he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. They had his back. They had lived life. The caves filling up. What David didn't know was that these men will be the same men that will bring him into the throne. They were rough and resentful, relentless, and they had lived life. It all came together in the cave. God brings things together in the most unlikely places. When we are lost and when we are alone, when we're trying to escape. Now I got you in the cave, God says. Just watch me act. Because now you are ready. <clears throat> Any cat lovers in the house? No, I haven't. Oh, good. Only a few. Well, I'm here to help you out this morning. How to wash a cat. <laughs> Put both lids of the toilet seat up. Add a quarter of a cup of pet shampoo to the water bottle. Pick up the cat and smooth and stroke it and soothe it gently while you carry it to the bathroom. In one smooth movement, put the cat in the toilet and close the lid. You may need to stand on it. No drinking water valve. At this point, the cat will self-agitate and make ample suds. Never mind the noise that comes from the toilet, the cat is actually enjoying this. <laughs> Flush the toilet three or four times. This provides a power wash and a rinse. Have someone open the front door of your home. Be sure that there are no people between you, the cat, and the front door. Stand well back to the side of the toilet as far as you can and quickly lift the lid. The cat will rocket out of the toilet, streaking through the bathroom, running outside, and he or she will dry himself off. Both the toilet and the cat are now sparkling clean. <laughs> Your sincerely... The dog. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as we come into a landing this morning, from Psalm 142, this is David speaking. Then I pray to you, O Lord. I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want. In life. May God be your place of strength and refuge. If you're in a place of joy or trauma or hardship or trial, God cares for us. Some of us love to escape. Maybe it's time to step out of that cave and see who God has brought your way. Pastor and friend Craig Rochelle says this, The fastest way to change someone's mind is to connect with their heart. This morning God wants to connect with 
your heart and renew your mind and say, hey, it's okay. Yes, at times it is lonely and scary, but I've got a plan for you as you live life, as you lead, as you be the best you that you can be. You are all I really want in life, Lord God. Amen. God bless you.